Hey everybody, it's Andrew and I'm back again with another video and today we have our full review of the Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Ultra. Now the Book 3 Ultra arrived in the studio last week and I was able to get my unboxing and first look video out. If you didn't see it, I'll drop a link in the description below. Make sure you check it out. Really interesting unboxing experience and a really premium device. Now I've been putting it through its paces ever since, uh, running all the benchmarks, doing all my testing as I normally do. I have some conclusions, I have some thoughts on this, and there are a lot of things I absolutely love about it, and there are some things I'm not so crazy about. We're going to get into it right now. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Ultra. Coming up. Now, before we get to the unit itself, I just want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Samsung, I'm not being sponsored by Samsung, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Samsung is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit was purchased with my own money. I did not receive a review unit from Samsung. Pricing starts at $21.99. For those interested, I'll leave a link in the description below for more information and where you can buy one. Yes, it is not cheap, but of course, this is a flagship device from Samsung, and they're going to compete with the others in this category. So I wasn't too surprised by the pricing, but you never know when these things go on sale down the road. So again, for the latest pricing, make sure you check out the link in the description below. Now let's just start off with the build quality. It is excellent. This is an all metal build. It's made out of aluminum or aluminum, depending on where you're from. And it does have a little bit of heft, but it does give it a little bit of premium quality to it. It feels very expensive. It feels very premium. It feels very MacBook-esque. Now say what you like about the MacBooks and Apple. They do make premium hardware and this fits that bill as far as that premiumness. I like what they did here. Very, very well built. It's a lot better than last year's Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360 that just had that magnesium alloy that just had a little bit of a cheap feeling. Not that it was cheap, but it just didn't have this premium feeling that we're getting here. Now, you will get that heft with the aluminum and you will feel it, but I'm willing to give that trade-off for this premium feel and build on this. It's been rock solid, very little give or flex in the chassis, and that's what we want to see, especially in this price point. But one thing you'll notice, it is a major, major fingerprint magnet. It collects fingerprints like I've never seen before. You will be wiping it down quite a bit. You will be carrying a cleaning cloth with you. Okay, let's check out the port selection. Let's start off on the left side. We get an HDMI port, two USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 ports that are full function, supporting data charge and display out. Moving over to the right side is a micro SD card reader, although I wish it was a full-size SD card reader. This being a 16-inch laptop, that would have been better, especially for content creators. A USB-A port and a 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack. I would say all in all, decent port selection. One thing to note that the two USB-C ports or Thunderbolt 4 ports are on the same side, on that left side. And when you are plugged in, you will lose one of those ports unless you're plugged in to a Thunderbolt dock just something to be aware of. Now, when it comes to user upgradability, it's actually pretty easy to get inside. You do need to remove the four feet on the bottom. They are removable and they are easy to put back on. So you don't have to worry about re-gluing anything or anything like that. Once you do remove those feet, there are four Phillips head screws, remove them. And then you are going to pry off the bottom plate with a guitar pick or a pry tool. And that's it. You're in. Now, once inside, you'll notice the two fans for cooling. You'll notice the vapor chamber cooling, and you'll notice that it has a 76 watt hour battery. We'll get to those batteries battery life numbers later on in this review, as well as the thermal performance in this laptop later on as well. But as far as what's user upgradable, the only thing that is user upgradable is the SSD. And as you can see from these reads and writes, the SSD numbers here indicate very fast PCIe Gen 4 SSD storage. And I like, I like the fact that it is user replaceable. There's a second M.2 SSD slot that allows you to add some more storage if you want to. That's even better. So I like having the dual SSD slots. Now, as far as the RAM, that is soldered into the motherboard, which is not surprising on this ultra portable type device here. Uh, although I wish it wasn't soldered and I wish it was user upgradable. Now, this unit that I have here is 16 gigabytes of LP DDR5 RAM. It is running
running in dual channel mode. If you get the Core i9 model with the RTX 3070 graphics, you also get 32 gigabytes of memory. So it's either 16 or 32, and it is performing well. Now, as far as the Wi-Fi 6E Bluetooth combo card here, that is soldered into the motherboard. That is not upgradable by the user. Both have been working flawlessly. I've had no issue in terms of the Wi-Fi or the Bluetooth, although I do notice that it is Bluetooth 5.1, not the more modern standard 5.3. Okay, let's talk performance. And as you can see, the Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Ultra with its 45 watt CPU, I have the Core i7, 13700H. That's 14 cores, eight efficiency cores, and six performance cores. And when you compare it to something with integrated Iris XE graphics, for instance, the Book 3 Pro 360 I took a look at, it definitely is a big improvement, especially when it comes to graphics performance. You definitely will want to look at this if you're a content creator looking to do 4K video editing and DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro, it worked really well. I thought the RTX 4050 GPU actually performed well for those tasks, although it does have a TGP of 60 watts, so just keep that in mind. So if you're gonna do AAA titles on their highest settings, probably not in the cards, although lower some of the settings, you're gonna definitely get some playable frame rates. As you can see from the 3D Mark test that I ran, the Time Spy scores were very good, as well as the Fire Strike scores, and as you can see, you get playable frame rates when it comes to the more popular titles. So you definitely could do some gaming on this, although I wouldn't classify this as a gaming laptop per se, but keep in mind, this does have Thunderbolt 4 ports. You can add an external GPU. And also keep in mind, this also comes in a Core i9 and an RTX 4070 with a TGP of 65 watts. So don't expect to be groundbreaking in terms of the graphics performance, even with the Core i9 model. Doing everyday tasks like Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, it all worked well. And I was actually surprised on how well this compared to the Apple MacBook Pro 16 with the M2 Max, especially when it comes to multi-core performance, it held its own. And as far as the single core performance, actually doing better on that Cinebench R23. A little bit surprising. I wasn't expecting that. And when it comes to the thermals, it did well. Look at this. It got a passing score of 99% on the Time Spy stress test, indicating little, if any, thermal throttling, maintaining good clock speeds throughout, even under heavy load. And it never got overly hot in terms of the surface temperatures with a couple of hot spots here and there, but never overly hot, never too hot to the touch, remaining relatively cool. That's been good. And I think we're seeing really good thermals because of the vapor chamber cooling that this employs, the two fans that it has. But when it comes to the fan noise, you definitely will notice it under heavy load, getting around 52, 53 decibels under heavy load. So it's definitely noticeable in that high performance mode. But when you're in the quiet mode or in the optimized mode, the laptop will remain relatively quiet. And that's been pretty good. Now, when it comes to battery, this sports a 76 watt hour battery. And I ran the PC Mark 10 modern office test, the Microsoft office test, the video playback test and the gaming test. And as you can see from these results, I would say decent results. Now, keep in mind, I did run these tests with the 120 hertz refresh rate enabled using more power, consuming more power. So you'll definitely get better battery life if you drop it down to 60 hertz or use the variable refresh rate or the dynamic refresh rate between 60 and 120. That's that's the default setting out of the box. And as you can see, seven hours and 42 minutes on the modern office test is a good simulation of everyday use in an office environment. So you can expect that. That's actually pretty decent, although not groundbreaking, definitely decent for this size laptop and performance. Now they do supply you a 100 watt power charger, a little bit more robust than the 360 model that we looked at. And it does support super fast charging, giving you a full charge in about an hour and 22 minutes. That's really fast. Okay, folks, let's talk about the display. And what we're looking at here is a 16 inch display, what they're calling a dynamic AMOLED 2X display with a resolution of 2880 by 1800. And that is a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. That's something we'd like to see. You'll see more on the display. You'll do less scrolling when it comes to web browsing. Now, this is a very bright display coming in at 472 nits. So it's going to be great for both indoor and outdoor use, although it is a very glossy display, as you see here you will notice the glare and reflection so that's something you're going to have to deal with not great and when it comes to the reflectiveness it's overly reflective now as far as the color gamut excellent coverage here 100 srgb 97 percent adobe rgb 98 percent of the dci p3 wide color gamut and 95 percent ntsc making this an excellent choice for a content creator who wants to do lightroom photoshop video editing and color grading it all worked well on this 
It's also an HDR display, so watching high dynamic range content is excellent on this. As you see here, this is HDR content, and it worked well. Watching Netflix, Amazon, YouTube, and HDR has been amazing on this. It's a great display. The only negative I have is how glossy this display is. It really is overly glossy, but you can put a screen protector that will give it a matte finish, although that takes away from some, some of the brilliance of this display, some of the vibrance. So I think that's a negative, of course, but again, if it was just a little less glossy, this would be the ultimate display. But nonetheless, it's still excellent for an AMOLED panel. So this is the camera on the Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Ultra, brand new here for 2023. This is a 1080p camera, and it's capable of 60 frames per second, which is what we're shooting this at right now. And what do you think about the video quality? What do you think about the audio quality of the array mics? Let me know in the comment section below. Now, this is not an IR camera. That means you cannot log in with face recognition with Windows Hello. But there is a fingerprint scanner as the power button doubles as that fingerprint scanner. Scanner. Setup was easy and has so far worked very well, registering my finger each and every time I've used it. Now, as far as this camera is concerned, there are a lot of effects you can do on this under the studio mode. You've got the face effects, which I'll show you right now. This is the subtle effect that you can do. And then, of course, you can do the smooth effect. And then, of course, there's the strong effect, and this is supposed to make me look even more beautiful, which I don't know if it's possible, but maybe it just might be. I don't know. Well, let's turn off those effects. Background, you can do the background blur effect, as you see here. You can do the color effect, which we have it in red right now. And then you could do the image effect, where we can have a background image, uh, again, much like a green screen and stuff like that. So you can do that. You could do auto framing. So this will always keep you in frame, of course. There's HDR, and then there, of course, is eye contact. So we've been seeing this in other brands, HP, Lenovo, Dell. They have those things as well. But uh, pretty interesting as far as uh, enhancing the video conferencing experience. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in that comment section below. Now, for those wondering, yes, you can open the lid with one finger, but one thing you will notice about the hinge is that the screen does have screen wobble. When you're typing, you'll notice it. When you touch the display, it really moves quite a bit. So just uh, something to be aware of. I'm not crazy about this screen wobble. I showed it in the unboxing video, and I'm noticing here as I'm doing this review. So something to keep in mind when typing. Now, speaking of the keyboard, it's a nice keyboard. It's got good tactility, good feedback, but it does have pretty shallow key travel when you compare it to something like the MacBook Pro or some of the other laptops in the 16-inch category, so a bit on the shallow side. But I never felt like my fingers were going to bottom out. I felt comfortable for extended periods of typing. Just wish it had a little bit more key travel. Now, you'll notice that it does have a numpad, although I'm not a big fan of this layout as far as this numpad is concerned. So when you're crunching numbers and stuff like that, I kind of prefer not to have it if they're going to implement this style and this layout of numpad. And the one thing that the numpad does is it moves the touchpad off center. That is not great either. Now, the multi-stage backlight worked well against these dark keys, so I had no trouble seeing the lighting or the LED lighting in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. Now, this has a very big, spacious touchpad. I think they're saying it's something like 39% bigger than previous iterations in the, in the Galaxy Book line. So you're going to have a lot of spaciousness. It worked well. It was responsiveness. It might even be a little bit too big, as I had a few inadvertent touches or here and there so just something to be aware of but it was very responsive when it comes to two finger scrolling and all the gestures work as you'd expect so the touchpad is good although it might just be a little bit too big if there is such a thing okay now let's talk about audio and i'm going to compare it to the macbook pro 14 that i have here since i think apple does some of the best i don't have the 16 inch or the more up-to-date 16-inch one here. So I'm just going to use the 14 for now. Uh, we're going to compare it to this. This has quad speakers. Uh, as far as the AKG, AKG tune speakers, I think they're good. I don't think they're as good as the Apple MacBook Pro. But uh, you'll let me know in the comment section below what you think about it. Now, to test this out, we're going to use Epidemic Sound. So let's hear from the Samsung first, and then we'll hear from the MacBook. And you tell me what you think as far as the sound quality is concerned. <laughs>
So my overall conclusion regarding the audio, I think the MacBook Pro had the superior sound as far as the fullness, richness, filling up the room much better than the Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Ultra. Although the Book 3 Ultra was good, I don't think it's great or outstanding, which I think the Apple MacBook Pro is. So I want to know what you think. Let me know what do you think about the audio in that comment section below. Okay, let's wrap it all up. What do I think about the Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Ultra here in 2023? And Samsung's newest edition does bring a lot to the table. I like a lot of these things that they do provide here, especially that 120 hertz AMOLED display with that dynamic refresh rate with the 16 to 10 aspect ratio and the fact that it is a 3K display over a 1080p that you got last year in the Galaxy Book line. That is a major improvement right off the bat. Now, the excellent build quality is really on par with that of an Apple MacBook Pro. It's that good. It's really solid. Works seamlessly with the Samsung devices. So if you're going to do things like quick share and all those kind of things, it's going to be really seamless if you have a Galaxy device like I have the Galaxy S23. Good port selection. It has a huge spaces touchpad, although it might be just a little bit too big, but that's just me. It is responsive when it comes to scrolling and doing all the gestures. Really nice 1080p camera here, although it's not an IR camera. And I thought the quality was good as far as the audio in terms of those microphones it really was good for video conferencing it is a major fingerprint magnet it's highly reflective in terms of that display and i did notice some screen wobble which was a little bit annoying so those are things you need to keep in mind those are things i am not crazy about but overall i think samsung has a really nice pro flagship device here to compete with the likes of a macbook pro 16 i thought the performance was very good out of that 13th gen h series processor I thought the 4050 GPU definitely added some graphics horsepower when you're doing things like video editing and stuff like that. So I think it was really good. I don't think it's a gaming laptop, as I mentioned, but you can play the occasional game here and there. And actually, it was pretty good in terms of those playable frame rates. Overall, I think they did a good job here with those few exceptions that I did point out. So what do you think about the Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Ultra? I like it. A lot of good things, as I pointed out. There are things that I'm not crazy about. And the biggest negatives to me, as I mentioned, were the screen wobble, the reflectiveness of the display, and the fact that it is a major fingerprint magnet. It just drove me crazy uh, where I have to carry a cleaning cloth all the time just to keep it clean. The fingerprints just seem to attract very, very rapidly on it. But having said that, the gorgeous display I like, and of course, the performance was very good. I like the combination of that 13th gen H series 45 watt CPU, the RTX 4050 GPU that worked out well. And I don't think you need to go to the Core i9, to be honest. Most people will be perfectly content with the Core i7 and the 4050. I think the thermals were good on this. So I think overall, they did a good job in keeping it cool, quiet, and the performance very good. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in that comment section below. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew, and I'll see you in the next video.